What's up everybody? Welcome back to Bayou Bandit Charters. On this week's episode, we're going to go over the only four rigs you'll ever need for targeting flounder. Three for artificial, one for live bait. If you love inshore saltwater fishing along the Alabama, Mississippi Gulf Coast, give my channel a subscribe. I've got tons of flounder fishing content on my channel and more to come. All right, to start things off, one of the most important things when you're targeting flounder is a good rod. If you've got a budget and you're gonna go buy a rod and reel for flounder fishing, spend the money on the rod, not the reel. You know, a decent reel is important, but the rod is key for flounder fishing. I use a seven foot six medium fast action rod. Some people don't like a rod that long, I do. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're throwing a seven foot, you know, I would suggest going with a medium fast action rod for targeting flounder. You need that sensitivity to feel that bite. Rig number one is the one I use most of the time. It's nothing more than a quarter ounce jig head with a loop knot. Be sure to tie that loop knot. It gives that jig head and that bait a ton more action. Y'all know I love throwing the fish bite products. I love throwing the dirty boxers for the flounder. But you know, if y'all y'all got a paddle tail you like using, my buddy Nathan Rich, his hoodwinks are doing a real good job. People are catching a bunch of flounder on those as well. But that is usually my go-to for the marsh. It's a quarter ounce jig head tied with a loop knot, uh, and that works perfect. You can also use a bucktail. A bucktail jig does an awesome job as well. It's got that, that hair or that fur, that skirting that will puff as you're jigging that bait. Flounder, love that as well. That's another option you can tie on to this simple rig. On all my setups for inshore, I use 20 pound braid to 20 pound fluorocarbon leader tied with a double uni knot. That's my go-to for anything in short. It works for all species. I really enjoy using that. All right, for rig number two, if y'all watched last week's episode, I was throwing a tandem rig. I'll leave the link right there where y'all can check out that video. It's fastly becoming one of my favorite rigs. Uh, all I do is I get about four foot of fluorocarbon leader, tie a loop knot, on each end with my jig heads. I do that first, then I space them out the way I want them. I do a double loop knot back through. I will be putting out a video in the near future of all the knots I tie and how I use them. This is a very good rig to throw when you wanna throw different types of baits and different colors of baits on the same line. If you're fishing by yourself, you wanna dial in on those flounder, this is an excellent option to use, is the tandem rig. I use a quarter ounce jig head on my long line, and I use a 1 16th on my short line. You can go with a 1 8th on both of them. There's a lot of different options you can play with this, with this rig. Uh, I had a lot of comments on my last video. Some people say, well, the lighter one's gonna always catch more. I'll be doing a video in the very near future seeing if that is the case or it's not the case. We're gonna be using the same color baits on each one, see what our catch ratio is. That is a possibility, cause it may look a little bit more natural, a little bit more lifelike. We'll have to go into that in further videos and break it down for y'all and see. But that is a very, very good option. Uh, like I said, it's becoming one of my favorites to throw because you know, if you're throwing a chartreuse and you're thinking, man, I bet, I bet, I wonder if I should be throwing that white. Well, you can put both of them on there at one time and throw them. So, moving right along. Rig number three for flounder fishing. This one may surprise y'all. This is nothing but a classic red fishing rig. It is a gold spinner. It's caught thousands and thousands of redfish in the marsh. I learned by mistake that this rig catches a lot of flounder. Just about every time I go and target redfish in the marsh, 
I'll catch a couple of flounder on this rig. So I started dialing in more on the flounder using this rig. I wind it real slow, just fast enough to feel that spinner blade spin. So that keeps it in the strike zone for the flounder. I'm not ripping it in, on top of the water like I would for redfish. I'll crank it slow, low in the water column, just fast enough to feel that spinner spin. And you will be surprised how many flounder will attack, and I mean attack, this gold spinner. I've got several videos of catching flounder on this gold spinner. There's one right there. I'll leave the link to it. And also at the end of this video, I have caught a, a lot of flounder on this gold spinner. This is something I'll go to if the water is just horribly nasty. Flounder have a big lateral line. They can sense vibration really, really well, and they are ambush predators. So when the water is just absolutely muddy, absolutely nasty, and you're not getting those bites, try a gold spinner, tie it on, roll it real slow, low in the water column, just fast enough that you can feel that sensitive rod, you can feel that spinner spin. And I guarantee you, it'll surprise you how many flounder you can catch on that rig. And last but not least, if you are a live bait guy, there's a lot of people that don't have the patience or haven't put in the effort throwing artificial and they're live bait people. So if you're one of those people that you love your bull minnows for targeting flounder, there's nothing better than a Carolina rig. I put a little different twist on mine. I wanna share it with y'all. Instead of an egg sinker, I use a bullet weight. The reason I use that bullet weight is it will go through the grass and it'll go over rocks and not hang up like your egg sinker will. This is, this is a 3 8 ounce. You can use a half if you've got current or bigger. Whatever you need for the current, you want to keep that bull minna pinned to the bottom. So I love using that bullet weight. And as you can see, we've got a We've got a swivel there. You can use any type of swivel you want. Doesn't matter. But what happens is that bullet weight protects that swivel as well. And you can really work this bait through the grass, through rocks, a lot easier without it getting hung up. And of course, a kale hook. And you see, I've got a short leader. That leader is about eight inches long. You don't want to go over that. So flounder is laying on the bottom, right? So you want to keep that bull minnow or live shrimp, whatever you're using, in that strike zone for that flounder. So you don't want to go with a, a foot, 14, 16, 18 inch leader. You're out of the strike zone. You're not, you will not be catching flounder. Short leader, about eight inches is all you want. That way, when that lead starts bouncing or dragging across the bottom, it gets that flounder's interest, right? He's looking and he sees that bull minnow just eight inches from his nose, sitting there wiggling, fighting. He's gonna hit it, he's gonna nail it, and you're gonna have a good fight and a good flounder. Hope y'all enjoyed this short video. That is the four must-have flounder rigs for inshore saltwater fishing. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button. If you hadn't subscribed already and you like flounder fishing content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it, help me out a lot. Thanks for watching, see y'all next week.